You're a cantaloupe. Five long years he wore this watch up his ass. These are my cactuses. I put googly eyes on them. Sometimes when I'm driving, I have this sudden impulse to turn the wheel quickly, head on into the oncoming car. Peter Pan has found a mother. You want me to say what? Like, I don't get it. Is that it? The ice is gonna break! All right, welcome back to Walkin' 101, the podcast where we watch every Christopher Walken project in chronological order. Now that could be movie, TV show, play, whatever we can get our hands on. I'm Kenny Johnson, documentary filmmaker, editor. Uh, I just started watching The Larry Sanders Show. Really? Just started? Just started. Hey now. Oh, hey now. Hank Kingsley. So I'm I'm very excited about that. Yeah. Finally got around to watch it. Yeah. It's so good. I'm Brandon Hardis, the actor, video maker. I'm a big fan of the Larry Sanders show. So when did you watch what the first episode recently? I, watched, I think the first three episodes. I got. To, I think the last one I watched was the the one with Carol Burnett, and she oh, like, yeah. she's like, you may have to get a loincloth, a uh, longer loincloth next time because I saw your balls. <laughs> <laughs> I love the. Uh, the scene in the first one where he asked to, like they're forcing him to do a sponsor and yeah it, now you just take your weasel right and gently toil the soil he has to yeah. advertise the garden weasel oh right. uh, look there's uh jimmy hoffa <laughs> <laughs> it was great yeah i, I, I love I, gary shandling yeah it was so good oh. and and we got some i would say breaking news not breaking news yeah. we got some news here we got some we got some supporters on our patreon page. that's right yeah we have um our first uh, three patrons on Patreon, yeah. and, and if you donate a dollar or more, you get an episode a week ahead of time, uh, of, uh, you know, than everybody else. And uh, one, one lucky patron who donated yes. five dollars, his yeah. name is Doug Heavener. Dougie, uh, Dougie boy, Dougie boy. Thank you very much. Thank you. You get a, get a shout out from us uh, if we if I'm mispronouncing your last name. Maybe it's Heavener, Doug Heavener. Just let us know. Just give let us, us a call. Know. Give us a call. <laughs> give us a call. Okay, so what what did we watch today? We watched a film called Roseland. It was in, came out in 1977, and it was directed by James Ivory, who has been nominated for three Oscars. Actually, so really? he was. Uh, the movies were uh, The Remains of the Day, Howard's End, and A Room with the View. So, oh, okay, so these are. Yeah. Uh, this guy's this guy's a legitimate uh, director, and th- this uh, this was an interesting movie. This yeah. is kind of a rare Christopher Walken movie in that you can't really find it anywhere. I had to get it on Amazon, like an actual physical DVD, instead right. of like renting it on Amazon or Hulu. And this was kind of a, his first kind of really good co-starring role it's starting to get a little meteor stuff here finally yeah yeah he he had a whole he he had a this was his biggest role so far but before we get too much into that let's uh let's catch up with each other in a little segment we like to call a walking in our shoes (laughs) so uh what have you been up to uh since our last record uh since our last record uh let's see uh, I know I've said this several times, but you know, just closing on a house with my wife. We're excited yeah. about that. We're yeah. moving in like Thursday through Sunday. We're just we're moving, and uh, besides that, work has really picked up with IMDb. So I've had to drop all of my classes that I was taking. I had one class really? left at CCBC, so all I'm not going to school anymore for the time being. So and- you're you're officially in the. The IMDb. <laughs> You're in that world. I, I'm in that world for yeah. now. You know, they hire me on contracts, and I have a year-long contract with them that started back in June. Mm-hmm. So June comes around next year. They could just decide not to hire me again, and then I have to figure out what to do. Right. But, uh, yeah, so there's that. And I am, I got, it, it, the papers are still being signed and stuff, but I got, I got a part in a commercial that I'm going to fly out to L.A., in the, f- the first two weeks of December, uh, by the time this episode com- comes out, I'll probably be doing that. And it's for a solar panel company. Oh. And it's this guy who, the guy who's directing it has been a fan of my videos. And he uh, was happened to be friends with a director that I worked with earlier this year in another movie to back down in D.C. And, yeah, just, just one of those things. He just wanted to cast me in a commercial just wants to nice. work with me so it's pretty cool and i'm excited to come out to la and just see my friends and 
Do you know yeah. what the what you're specifically doing in the commercial yet? Do you know like the role or the script or is there have been passed along yet? Well, he was. It's I was gonna play a scientist. I guess more more like a a, a teacher teaching uh-huh. a classroom about solar panels, and uh-huh. then from there it gets surreal, and I'm taking one of the students on a tour of like through the history of of dinosaurs dying and then they okay. they they turned into oil which which we use now but not very efficiently this is why solar panels are more efficient right and then uh, what he but what he wants now since i suggested it i actually thought he wanted this in the first place but mm-hmm. i brought it up to him and he thought it was a good idea was i'm gonna play all the characters because he likes my reenactment videos uh, okay. so i'm gonna play all the characters in the commercial and uh, I think there will be a few little movie references, like callbacks to my reenactment videos. Mm-hmm. And the hope is that using, you know, he's getting something out of me too, or hopefully my notoriety on YouTube will draw views mm-hmm. to the commercial and then they might want to do another one and maybe it's a, it'll be a campaign or maybe it'll be a one-off thing. You never know. Right. So, so that's, that's maybe, pretty much Maybe it. you'll get some free solar panels out of that for your, your new house. Yeah. There yeah, you go. Maybe. I, I don't know. Uh, I, your friend Eric, uh, <laughs> your friend Reichenbach, uh, yeah, well, he, likes the solar panels. He, d- he does. And he bought them. And pretty expensive. But, uh-huh. you know, he's saving a lot of money. Right. You know, and so. it's actually pretty efficient in Maryland? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, his house is, he's got a really, it's a really high, tall house. And there's... um. I think there's really no trees around him, so it's a lot of sun mm-hmm. hitting his house all the time. So yeah, he's he's probably making a good. He's saving a lot, but you have to you have to spend a lot mm-hmm. to get them. But then once you kind of hit that threshold, then you're you're fine. Yeah, you you'll be saving a lot of money. Yeah. So, um, what's going on with you? I I may be getting a chance to go to China, an <laughs> all all exclusive paid trip to China. Um, very cool to do a documentary on on. MMA on on these six fighters that are going over to China to have a have a fight have a couple fights okay and um, and this is that company Evolve that you do short yeah, documentaries it's, it's for. their parent company uh, World Wrestling Network Live WWN mm-hmm. Live and they they do a, a variety of bunch of different uh, wrestling companies they have a bunch of them and then they're they're trying to do this 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 fighting thing and. Um, you know, it's it's changed a couple times. Uh, we finally got the schedule worked out, and I finally was able to work my schedule out. And now I can go over there, fly over there. They're going to pay for the flight. They pay for the hotel, the food, everything. And it's supposed to be an incredible experience. Nice. Um, five-star hotel and all this stuff. So um, I'm looking forward to that. But as always, I'm always nervous about the the uh, the flight. <laughs> The hey. logistics of it, you know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? Trying I to get to that. the airport and everything. The airport, and then once you get over there, I think I have I fly into Shanghai, and then I got to fly somewhere else, and I'm not going to be flying with the rest of the crew. I have to come up either a day or two after them, and it is like... That is stressful. I, I, the one yeah. time I flew internationally, it was to Romania to shoot the, the Scorpion King movie, right. and it was it was scary because we had to... Yeah, I think we stopped somewhere. There was a layover in Rome, I think. Mm-hmm. And then I worried about is there is there going to be a way to figure this out? But luckily, they right. did. English is pretty much everywhere. Yeah, it's like it, it, in in every airport, you think it's you think there's going to be some confusion, but it's pretty easy to find your yeah. way around. And I heard uh, apparently, if, if I am going to Shanghai, and I think that's the airport I'm flying into, it's it's pretty um, it's busy, but it's it's easy to navigate and things like that. And but once again, I don't know the specifics just yet. It is next month. It is in December, mm-hmm. so I'm trying to get everything ready. I'm trying to get everything organized uh, on top of get all the the film equipment ready, get all that stuff ready. Because when you go over there, you know you got to get you know it's, it's, you got to get adapter wall port adapters for oh, everything because yeah. there's going to be countless batteries I need to be charging and all this equipment, let alone being able to figure out. You know, you figure out all that stuff, and then you still have to film it. So it's like really, it's a lot of complicated things, and it's yeah. I didn't think about all the equipment. That actually makes me really nervous for you. I'm right. sorry. So <laughs> I mean, the filming part is so easy. That is the easiest part. Filming them and, and making the the actual documentary is not hard. It's once again, it's just getting there. It's all the technical specs. It's this. It's that. It's all mm-hmm. these those things I can't stand. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm a little bit nervous about it, but you know, I'll be fine. 
You'll be good. I'll be good. All right, let's get let's get into it. Let's let's get. This is why you're here. This is why you're listening. You want to hear you want to hear about the old old walking. <laughs> you want you want to take a nice little a walking. Oh yeah. All right. So um, we watched. Uh, we were saying earlier, Roseland, uh, 1977. It was it was made. Um, it's about three stories. Yeah. Three little little stories. One's called the Waltz, the Hustle, and the Peabody. Uh huh. And it was really a story. Stories about lonely people uh, trying to find someone to dance with it's on, like on a, the dance floor. Yeah, and it's this. It it, it was shot, and and the set, the setting was the Roseland Ballroom, which is apparently one of the most famous, the most famous ballroom in the country. I don't. know. Maybe in New York. It's maybe in New York. I thought you found that. Yeah, it's something. Someone said it online. I don't believe anything that anyone <laughs> said online. And it's uh, a lot of. Uh, it, it's a place where a lot of senior citizens come, at least in the in the film, right. where they come to uh, dance and compete in, the, in, the, in these little dance competitions. And they just come to feel connected and maybe better about themselves and uh, for some companionship. Just old, lonely people. It, it, was, it was actually pretty depressing, I think, by it the got, end of the movie. Yeah, it got really depressing at the end. I think we need, like, a pick-me-up. We need to watch, like, Requiem for a Dream or something. <laughs> so, like, yeah, the three stories was all, like, it was, you know, here's story one about the waltz. And it was this uh, older woman, and she's trying to meet up with this older man. And uh, it was kind of slow, but it, it kind of got us into the world mm-hmm. of the Roseland. You get used to it. You understand kind of what's going on here. Um, and it, uh, that was about the first 25 minutes or so. Yeah, it was a short one. It was a little bit slow. I kind of like how it started a little bit. It was They shot it very like a pseudo documentary style. You know, it's kind of um, a, a lot of extras, a lot of actors will be dancing around on the on the floor and then you know the camera would be kind of getting glimpses of these people sitting around interacting with each other dancing there's some narration at the beginning kind of establishing what what it's like here Mm -hmm. um you know it had this nice kind of diffused light in this the soft glow (laughs) the sepia almost looking tone of the film uh but yeah the first story is it started off kind of interesting there'd be interesting elements to it but it was kind of slow i was kind of in and out a little bit kind of paying attention mm-hmm. 25 minutes in and then we finally get we finally get to the the walking piece yep and which was the longest uh piece it was the longest story right in the middle there right and uh christopher walken played a character named russell he's uh he's he's a gigolo yeah he's this suave cool just awesome dude women love him they're always just pawing at him and and we it's established that like you know he has these two older women that are kind of clients of his i guess you could say you know they pay him for his time i think it's implied that they pay him or or that they kind of buy him things or Or give him him free things i'm not entirely sure like i don't know if he's an official gigolo and would call himself that but he's just slipped into this lifestyle where he just kind of uh, gives companionship, uh, among other things, I'm sure, to these older women. Right. And it's established that he could have gone pro. He could have been a pro dancer. But he just kind of got comfortable with this lifestyle, and he's just been kind of floating by. And he meets this character. I forget what the character's name is, but uh, she was Geraldine Chaplin. She's Charlie Chaplin's daughter. Correct. And yeah. Eugene O'Neill's daughter's daughter. Yes. Was that it? Yeah. Think something Charlie like Chaplin. That. Oh, it was her grandmother. Yeah. Something like that. Una O'Neill and Charlie Chaplin. And uh yeah, I mean she she's been in a bunch of things. She's done a lot of stuff with Robert Altman. Uh mm-hmm. I was like, where do I know her from? She was from one of my favorite films, Nashville. Okay. Uh, by Robert Altman. Um a lot of David Lean films too. Uh she's all over the place forever. Very you know, very good established actress. Yeah. And it was it was good to see her play that role. Yeah, with, yeah, she was great. Walking. Why? You think I'm vain? Guess I like myself pretty well. I like my suit. Do you? My tie? Cute. Cute? And the rest of me? Eyes? Hair? Profile? Legs long enough? Mmm, flat. Why are you laughing? It's a serious subject. And like she was, she was like the love interest where yeah. she comes along and walking, walking his character up until this point has been this kind of suave, cool motherfucker. He, he, right. he looks at her and he actually feels something for her and he just kind of pursues her. And, uh, and then when it gets, when it got really interesting for us, I think j- just in the story was when, all right, so hold on, I'm trying to wrap my head around he, it. He, 
it's there's two, there's two older women yeah. that he is really I guess dealing with. There's like a dance teacher and then just this another older, another older woman. I think the name uh their character's name was one was Cleo and I believe she was the dance instructor and she mm-hmm. taught Christopher Walken's character back in the day. She knew him for like 10 years or so and then he just kind of I guess started uh fucking her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean And then and then the other chick was Pauline. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, he was kind of floating around between these two women mm-hmm. and uh, like, oh, please come over and they'd be calling. They'd be calling him like three times a day and they, they need they need some loving. They're yeah. lonely and they need some loving. Um, there was a great scene where he goes over to Cleo's dance studio and Pauline comes in and he's just sitting between them. Right. And he's showing them each little little uh he's showing them each affection like back and forth like she's showing him these things that he bought that she bought for him pauline Mm -hmm. and he kind of kisses her on the cheek and at the same time he kind of grabs cleo's leg and smiles at her like he's he's spreading himself thin between like these two women right and then like you were saying earlier you know he kind of falls i guess he's starting to fall in love with with uh chaplin Mm -hmm. a little bit and he wants to kind of make a he wants to have a serious relationship with her. Yeah. But it's like, can he do that? Yeah, that that I think was the question. Like, is this a man who's going to change? Because then then there's Cleo's character who looks at Geraldine, uh, you know, kind of spending a lot of time with Walken. And she's saying, uh, you don't know him like I do. I've known him for 10 years. Basically implying that he's going to do the same thing to you that he that he's done to me. He's going to play you. He's going to play you. And you don't know if it's true or if it's just straight up jealousy. Right. Um, Could be. Could be. And as the story goes along, it turns out it was kind of true. You know, there's this moment near the end where uh, Walken is basically... There's a shot where he's going to choose between whether or not to go with Geraldine... Or with Pauline, and he stays with Pauline. Because she just gave him, like, a watch and a, hey, we're going on a cruise and stuff like that. And yep. the whole time, uh, you know, uh, Geraldine's like, you know, y- you have to say no to these women. You're supposed to be with me now. You tell them that you're moving in with me. We're going to we're gonna have a relationship now. We're going to fall in love. Mm-hmm. Also, too, Geraldine was another lonely person. You know, she was married young, apparently divorced, and, you know, she's trying to find somebody as well. And, you know, she finally finds this one person and finally feels very attracted to him and then he's like mm, no i'm gonna stay and i'm gonna take the money and the gifts and the, yep. i'm gonna live my jiggle of life because it's easy and it's fun and uh, i don't know if it's fun mm-hmm. but uh it's, yeah it's it's exciting so what, what, what you know what'd you think of of walking in this role this was his first this was our first kind of real uh experience with a meteor role for him on this podcast definitely this was this, this is a lead role i mean yeah. in, in his little vignette yeah, he was, was definitely a lead he was the lead I, I i liked him i thought he was he has this uh he's just so fucking cool and yeah. suave and and he's uh trying not to you can see in scenes where he's giving the women you know what they need emotionally and uh yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't... He he was like, okay, so I, I kind of he's got this really good, cool, mysterious air, yeah, about him. Like it's almost like the audience and the characters in the scene want to get to know more about him because he's such a calm, suave, three piece suit wearing motherfucker. Like mm-hmm. shows up, his hair's slicked back. He's got the good looks, you know. He's so cool looking, uh, and but. Yeah, there's there's a there's a there's an element of this mystery to him, and I think like in the first scene, like in his first real scene, it's like him and Geraldine, and um, they go into this. I guess it's like a, a it's a dance hall. It's a small dance hall or dance studio. And yeah, it's dark. It's a dark room, and he's in there, and they're exchanging this dialogue, and um, there seems to be like this calm intensity to him. Yeah, he's really, yeah, yeah. He's really calm intensity. Like he is like laser focused. Like I want this girl. I'm gonna get with this girl. I'm gonna th- I'm gonna say all these smooth, cool things. But I'm. It's almost like I'm gonna kind of say it in a I don't give a fuck kind of yeah mentality, and it's gonna make her even more attracted to me. So and the the whole time you're watching him, you you are trying to figure out what he's thinking. Like, right? Is he being genuine? What does he want? You're you're really looking for that 
that honesty and I think he plays it well. Like maybe even at times he's not even sure what he wants. He's just yeah. kind of he sees something pretty and he's chasing after it. But then that's going to put this other life that he's gotten comfortable with in jeopardy. Right. And he's struggling with that. The, the whole time you're watching him, you're really just trying to figure out what is in his head. And right. that makes him really interesting to watch. It does. It really does. Yeah. And I began to think, I was like, oh, man, so that's when he really starts to come kind of in his element. Mm-hmm. You know, the mystery of walk-in. That is, it is. It's This is the first, one of the first, uh, I mean, can you think of any other roles in the past we've watched so far where there's no. that mystery element? Not, not, I, not really. Maybe like Next Stop Greenwich Village. Sort of. He kind of played, you know, the, the badass, the bad the bad guy, I would say. Yeah. Um, but, but the, I mean, Annie Hall. Well, yeah, I guess Annie, so. But that was, that was, uh, I don't know, that was like an extreme... Yeah, that was like a one-off, like, right. obvious joke. Right. This is the most layered... Yeah, it is the mysteriousness that makes him that makes him interesting. He's you know? very charming. Very charming Very charming, guy. very charming guy. And uh, this is also the first movie where we got to see him dance. He he, he was a professional dancer for years. And uh, this is, what, maybe eight years into his tel- film and television career. Probably, and he's yeah. finally gotten... A little bit of dance time. I was actually hoping for a bigger dance number. I thought they were going yeah. that direction. Didn't. They didn't we never really got it. There wasn't much. There was a little. I, I like. I laughed when he got out onto the dance floor and we got to see him just dance for like ten seconds. Right. I just got excited. And he's on record as saying that uh, I don't have the exact quote in front of me, but he was talking about. I think somebody asked him. Uh, I've noticed that you dance a lot in your roles. Is that something that you it, like? He'll actually just do it when it's not written in he'll add it to the character mm-hmm. and he said yeah you know i used to do it you know more but you know i i noticed that i, I do it a lot so i've kind of toned it down it was something along those lines where he uh would like to bring a little dance move to a line of dialogue here and there so it so it was nice it was nice to see mm-hmm. so what would you uh what would you rate this on the walk-in performance scale we're doing this out of five now okay walk-in scale Walk and scale. Right. Uh, I I mean I, I thought it was great. I mean if you're looking for if you're looking for just really extreme, crazy, fucked up out there Christopher Walken characters, you're not going to get it here. This is no. more the more subdued, just internal uh, struggles going on. I I I thought he was great. Yep. I, I guess I'll give it a. We have to do five. Didn't we do ten last time out of ten? No, we did five. We did five. But then we can do decimals, right? Yeah. So why not just do ten? And what? do if because I'm gonna get a four point five. You're you're going that high? What? <laughs> you're going that high? What's the, all right? Well, I'm giving. I'm just gonna give it like a three. Why a three? Because of the movie or because I mean, of yeah, him? you can wait. He was fine. He was he was very good in it. He was. It, but it's a forgettable role, unfortunately. I guess. Well, compared kinda, to his he, other stuff, he does a better version of this role in other films. I kept it kept kind of coming back to me like a little bit of the Catch Me If You Can role. Okay. Very similar, very suave, kind of charming guy, kind of a little mysterious. But there's a certain level of sadness to him, mm-hmm. like a little bit of failure maybe in life. Something happened. Okay. He plays those. He will do that better in other films. I feel like this is just this is just starting. Okay, you know? so <laughs> and uh, I give it a, I give it a three. Okay, all right. It was it was good. I mean, then we had to sit through. So the ch- the middle chunk of the movie was his his story. Yeah, um, and it lasted from the twenty five minute mark until it was like a half hour left. I think of the movie, maybe less. Yeah. And then we still have to sit through that last half an hour. And yeah. by that point, we were kind of... It's its a slow movie. Yeah. The movie itself is very, very slow. And the last segment was also very slow. It was about a woman, and they fucking did the, the, the Peabody. Uh-huh. It's a fast dance. Don't do not do the Peabody if you're old. That's what it told you, because yeah. you'll die. <laughs> it's a fast dance. The older folk can't take it. Yep. And then it's the couple... This weird foreign woman. She's kind of. She, she, I think she was German. <sighs> yep. And there's an uh, older gentleman. He's pining after her and trying to impress her. And uh, then he does the Peabody and he dies. Yep. And we were really waiting for it to be over. We were struggling to pay attention. We had mm-hmm. already gotten our nut off with we, walking we did. earlier. And we was, did. 
Uh, now there were two. I tried to find things mentioning Christopher Walken's performance in this movie. And the first mm-hmm. thing is this was a review of Roseland in 1977 in the New York Times. Mm-hmm. And the guy who wrote it, Vincent Canby, called this Christopher Walken's best screen role to date. So, nice little blurb. Well, maybe Walken... Yeah, because he, yeah, he was actually in this movie. Yeah, he let's was. Be, let's be honest. This is true. Uh, the other movies, he's not... He was in it, but not... He wasn't a central role, you know? Yeah. He was a, a legit co-star of this film, star of his segment, of his... his his uh, vignette part. Definitely. And uh, the other the other thing I found, this is from a, a book that came out in 2005. It was a series of interviews with the director of this film, James Ivory. It was called James Ivory in Conversation, How Merchant Ivory Makes Its Movies. And the guy interviewing him, Robert Emmett Long, said, I liked Christopher Walken as Russell, who never lets his emotions show on his face. Uh. He's as smooth as silk and ever so calculating in his moves. We see him dancing with women out on the dance floor only briefly, but it's obvious that he's a very, very good dancer. Walken began as a dancer on Broadway, but I don't imagine you cast him for that reason. And James Ivory says, that was one of the reasons, but the main reason is that I'd seen him in smallish parts in other movies and felt he'd be very good as Russell. He had a... Excuse me. He had a kind of sophistication and cool, uh, and, but he was obviously street smart, the epitome of the 70s young leading man. Uh, that pretty much nails it. There you go. That was that was a great summary of his performance in this in this movie. Yep. And if it weren't we should have started those... with that. Why didn't we? <laughs> I, I'm, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, no, no, <laughs> I should have. We did. We did, we almost said all those those things. Yeah. You know, we we kind of saw that. So yeah, I mean, it's true. Yep. This is finally this is finally when he was starting to kind of get into his own and he's hot. He's hot. Hot hot hot. Walking. Mhm. So, I guess we should talk about uh uh Should we go into our next new segment so here? I, we we have a, a new next, segment. Brand new. <laughs> brand new. We don't know how this is even going to work, but we're going to try it. All right. So, uh, the, the, Oh, sorry. What, no, wanna... what, what's the segment called? You're the one who came up with this idea. What, do you, what are we calling this? <laughs> All right. Uh, this is the best name I could come up for it is just Secondhand Walken. Yeah. And like the thing about Christopher Walken, you know, he's he's so prolific is that everybody has a story about Christopher Walken. Everybody has some kind of secondhand story they've heard working with him, hearing a story about him. Could be a bizarre rumor. Could be something, a direct story they worked with him. So uh, we figured we'd just pick one at random and uh, and share it. So I was researching this character actor named Dan Fogler yesterday for an IMDb video. And he's, uh, he's he was the lead in Balls of Fury with yeah. Christopher Walken. Great movie. Great. <laughs> I was like, watching clips of it. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's pretty it's funny. A stupid, it's a stupid, stupid, funny <laughs> movie. I mean, yeah. But we'll talk about that later. Oh, we will. We'll get and, to that. And so Dan Fogler, uh, he was being interviewed for Just Seen It Reviews on YouTube. And uh, he just had an interesting little anecdote. We thought I thought it was funny, so... This is him, Dan Fogler, talking about working with Christopher Walken. <laughs> Getting to hang out with Christopher Walken. I've heard one great story. You know, he's just, he's like exactly how he is in movies. Is that, is that true? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and you he, did impressions of him for him? Never. No. I, because, yeah, I, I said to him, I would just talk to him to hear him talk. Because, you know, he's just a legend and, you know, one of my heroes. So I would say to him, like, uh, you know, what's it, what's it like that everybody and their grandmother has an impression of you around the world, you know? And he says, it's fine. Just never before a take. (laughs) You do it before a take. And I'll kill you. (laughs) And I was just like, okay, yes, sir. He said, Jay Moore, he do it all the time. I wanted to kill him. (laughs) Nice little, nice little, (laughs) nice little story there. And if you got any walk-in stories, please... Please share them with us. Absolutely. Go to our go to our Facebook page. That's probably the easiest way to kind of share these stories. Mm-hmm. Facebook.com slash walking one oh one. Give us a little, little post. If you got a video, definitely include the video or just just tell. Even if it's a made up story. Yeah. Even if it's a made up story. <laughs> total the, bullshit. Total bullshit. Throw it up there. Yep. Let us know. Because we'll talk about it. <laughs> That's the fun part about these like secondhand stories. Nobody knows if it's true or not. Yeah. We're gonna be really only uh, kind of uh, uh, expanding upon the lie 
and just really just making it even more well known yep. if it is a lie. So who mm-hmm. cares? I'm just gonna fan the flames. I'm gonna fan the flames. That's what this podcast is all about: fanning the lies. <laughs> so what do we got next? What's up next? What's uh, up? What's uh, what are we doing next? Up next is it's a western, I believe, called oh, yeah. Shoot the Sundown. Shoot. And uh, Christopher Walken plays a character named Mr. Rainbow. And the, the plot is a couple of strangers arrive in a small town, each one after a different thing. That's the plot synopsis I just found in IMDb. Margot Kidder's in it. Margot Kidder? Who's Margot Kidder? Margot Kidder. Uh, oh, Lois Lane. Lois Lane. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that shit crazy. That and shit crazy. Christopher Walken. I don't know anybody else. I don't know else. anybody else. Yeah, I'm looking at the cast. It's all right. I'm sure it'll be good. Mm. Yeah, it'll be it will be a movie. It'll be a movie. <laughs> that's for sure. This this looks bizarre. We, we were looking at one movie that's coming up soon called Heaven's Gate. Oh yeah, Heaven's Gate. So that uh, stars Chris Christopherson. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh huh. And I believe the original cut was five and a half hours long. <laughs> no joke. Five. And, I saw that. I saw. Five and a half hours long action adventure western drama. I'm like, this has got to be a typo. It's got to be a mistake. <laughs> so I went and like looked it up, and uh, apparently it was cut around very, very different, a lot of different ways. The director was not happy about it. Mm. Uh, apparently, the, the 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 real director's cut uh, is 216 minutes. So that's the, so that's, that's the one that we'll probably end up watching three and a half hours right because the five and a half hours one i heard a review it was a a travesty in, in cinema history was one of the things it said <laughs> this is strong words <laughs> yeah uh i mean it's got some good it's got some people in it it's got um like i said chris christopherson uh john hurt mm-hmm. uh who else is in it uh, dude from uh, Sam Watterson. Yeah, he's Law and Order, baby. Law and Order. Uh, Mr. Law and Order. <laughs> Joseph Cotton. Oh, yeah. Joseph Cotton from uh, Citizen Kane. Third oh. Man. Uh, the good, interesting cast here. Yeah. Interesting cast. I Jeff think... Bridges. Oh, look at that. Ooh, Jeff Bridges in a Western. All Jeff right, I'm excited. Bridges in a Western. I think the longest project we'll have to watch is a made-for-TV movie called Caesar. That's mm-hmm. four hours long. It was Caesar's story. We'll make a day of it, man. Spoiler alert. He gets stabbed <laughs> in the back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, next time. Next time is uh, Shoot the Sundown. Just shoot it down. Yep. Get that sun out of the sky. We're going to put some pistols, bullets in it. We're going to shoot it. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I guess that that about that about does it for this episode. We'll uh, let's go, let me go right into the little outro that I got here, all written up and let's planned. Let's do it. All right, so that about does it for this episode. A very special thank you to Render Perfect Productions for lending us some basic equipment to make and record this podcast. Here's a little plug for them. Render Perfect Production is an award-winning Baltimore-based video production and video marketing agency specializing in creating engaging visual content and interactive user experiences. For more info, go to myrender.com. Get some videos made by them and some websites. Uh, So that's kind of like our first sponsor for the show. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, if you want to help Brandon and I continue making this podcast, please visit our Patreon page patreon.com slash walk in 101 we got some great rewards special thanks to the people who are already uh donating mm-hmm. some of their funds to us greatly appreciate it thank you and make sure you check out walk in 101.com for more info and updates make sure you subscribe to us on itunes find us on on the soundcloud like us on facebook mm-hmm. facebook.com oh, slash walk 101 yeah please share Share, share away. Like we were saying earlier, if you got some stories, you got some crazy videos, please post some pictures, whatever little interesting facts you can find. By all means, yes, please do. And we're going to start doing that too. We just we're we post some pictures mm-hmm. of us watching this this podcast just today. A couple dorks in a studio. A couple dorks sitting around looking at the screen like idiots. 
and we'll post some pictures of suave, motherfucking suave looking walking. Yep. Mm, getting with them old ladies. Oh, man. Getting with them. Living the dream. Living the dream. All right. We'll end it. We'll end it now with our nice little segment. Thanks, Thanks for, for walking, walking with, with us. us.